Hey everybody, let's look at Codea. Here's the introduction of Codea and all that it entails. So let's just talk about it. When you load it up, you got a lot of cool stuff here. There's tons of sample projects that you can use here up along the top banner here. And then all your projects are going down here. So I would love for you just to check those projects out because you know what? They're giving you the code behind all of these projects. You see, Codea is a program, an app on your iPad that you can use to create apps. You can actually, if you get so far, you can actually upload them to the Apple Store, which would be amazing, wouldn't it? To have your own app on the store? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, it uses a, what's called Lua. This is a language that the computer uh, uses. It's based off of C, and it is a very simple programming language that you can use to start off. And so let's do that. Let's talk a little bit about the language and the code today, as well as Codea and the settings. So let's talk about it. This was developed by Two Lives Left, and it's pretty amazing. You can come in here and you can look at the different language that is dealt with with the camera. Here are all the different uh, codes and things that you can use with the camera. And you can run the apps when you throw them up there. So you've got the app here. I hit the play button on the bottom right. And here is the camera app. And you've got the back camera right now. And if you want to do the front camera, you can hit the front camera there on the left. You can take a photo. And this is the app. If you want to go back, you hit the back arrow there on the bottom left. And you can go look at the code. There's some really cool apps here if you want just to check some out. You can look at the 3D lab here, and this actually renders 3D images and things like that. So here is uh, the little parameter box here on the left side, and you can change the size of the blocks. You can take the camera height and move it up really, really high. Change the angle. You can spin it around, come down really, really low, and look at those blocks. Move them around. Pretty cool there. You can actually look at the, the code here. Here is the code. Now, this might not make any sense to you, but that's all right because you're going to learn. You're going to learn. Fun thing with this is you can start messing with it. And you can, that if that is how you learn, to come in and tinker with the code can be really, really fun. It can just be a lot of fun. This is Brick Out. This was developed by, I believe it was Steve Jobs, was actually the first one who came out with this game a long, long time ago. But you're familiar with this game, right? You just bounce the ball off the paddle here, or off the bat is what they call it, and then just go back and forth until you've beat the level. Well, you know what? We can start messing with the game here. If you look here, this is the ball class. Notice there's a whole bunch of tabs up on the top there. This is the ball class. This class speaks specifically and programs specifically the ball. So here, you've got the radius of 10. Well, let's mess with it. How funny would it be to change that to 100? Let's see what happens. Ah, <laughs> look at that gigantic tennis ball. Boom, goes through there, hits all of those, and let's do this. Let's make it challenging. Let's take it down to one. Ready? Look at that. And it, it's funny thing is, is it goes through all the blocks. If you can find it <laughs> as it's going through all of them, where is it? It's over there. All right, that's really, really neat. Or if that's too challenging for you, let's come up to the bat, and let's make the bat size. Let's change it's X here. You're going to do some math, X and Y. We're going to make it the width of the screen. Boom! Ready? There it is. And I just will sit here and make it go over. And look how fast it's going. It is going so super fast, which lets us go back to the ball here, and we can change its velocity. Let's change its velocity here with the Y. Let's make it 77, and that's going to be super fast. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's telling me I lose. I must be losing a whole bunch of lives there. I must be zooming past the, the paddle there. That's funny. So you can actually just do some messing around and tinkering, and you can actually take some of the code from these programs and use them in your own as well. That is really helpful. For example, here's the Bit Invader. This is a triangle, and you are your job is to move it back and forth and shoot these different meteors and stuff and not die like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you have a game, something like that, that you want to want to use, you would look in here under the main class and see what exactly they use and how they program that little triangle ship down there. All right, so just to talk a little bit about the layout, what I have done is under the gear there on the top right, I have made mine the dark screen. I really like that. You can increase or decrease your font size of the program, so you can make it pretty small if you'd like. 
You can sort your projects by name, recent, you can link it to Dropbox, which would be pretty cool if you have your own iPad. And then over here, some amazing things. There's a reference, there's some shader labs, assets you can do, and air code. This is by far the best thing. Here is the web address that you plug into your browser that if once you plug it in there and on your iPad, you can actually see the program running and you can program it on the computer. Hugely, hugely helpful. I would recommend this would be the only way that you program in here because it's so much easier to type, it's so much easier to work on the browser and then and then see the iPad as the result of your actions. And I'm not gonna do it here, I can't do it here while I'm recording, but test it out. It's really, really cool. All right, well, let's do this. Let's create our own project here. And we're just gonna call it Basic Project. And let's kinda go over what this is. This is your main class. This is where everything is run. You have a setup function here, and then you have a draw function here. And the setup function, as we go through this, does something one time. It sets up the project itself, whereas the draw does it every single frame, about 60 frames per second, something like that. So it's running 60 times per second, amazingly quick. All right. Well, what do you notice when you look at the project here? Do you see a whole bunch of different colors? Yeah, look at the green stuff there. Notice that it starts off with two little hyphens there. These are what are called comments, and these make it so that you can organize your code. You want to be able to organize. If you can't organize your code, you're going to get lost. You don't work on a project for a week or a weekend, and you come back and you're like, oh, what on earth am I doing? Well, if you are good about commenting, you're going to be just fine because you're going to come into your code there. You're going to see, ooh, I remember. This is where I left off, All right. Uh, the pink are prescribed functions, having to do with a function there. The print, that is specific commands. The red there are the code that will be printing. And the blue are some other things that have to do with drawing and so forth. So let's look at this real quick. If I hit the play button in the bottom right, notice the play button is also on the top of the keyboard. I hit play there. It's going to bring up a gray screen. And on the left side, notice it says output and hello. What that means is only the computer or the iPad sees that. It doesn't, the, the user, the person using this app will not see hello world. Whereas if I hit the back arrow and I come down here underneath and draw and I type something in like text and notice that there's a lot of cool things about this that the things start popping up. I do the parentheses and I'm gonna start putting in some text with the quotes there. And now we're gonna type in um, hello world here and you will see that it'll pop up there in the main screen because we're going down to the draw section. Now just to give an example with the text it asks you for the x coordinate well we're going to put it in the width we're going to multiply it by 2, uh, 0.5 so that means it's going to be in the middle of the screen and our height is also going to be multiplied by 0.5 so what we've just told the computer to do is to write hello world in the middle of the screen for the width and the middle of the screen for the height. We hit play and it will pop up hello world. Now notice it's not very big, but we'll talk about that later. So there it is. Now the user actually sees that as opposed to the stuff on the left. Come in here and this is for the computer. And notice come over here, there it is on the left side, okay? So that's a way for you to do some checking, figure out what some of the variables might equal and just mess around with your program for that much. All right, so let's just talk about this. Again, setup is for the things that you're going to use for the first time, whereas draw, it does it every time. Let's look at background right there. You know what background will do, right? Let's just tap on it, and you can change the background whatever color you would like. So let's do this. Let's do like a yellow, and then we tapped out of it, and we hit play, and there it is. It's hello world. Now, if I wanted my text to be a little bit bigger, I'm going to write font size, and I'm going to suggest instead of doing a number, you do it in relation to the width of the screen. And this will make sense as you get further on in programming. But for the most part, if I do it, I want to make the width of this, the, I want to make the font size a tenth of the width of the screen, it'll make it pretty big. That way, uh, if I want it even bigger, I come in here and I go in 2.1, we'll make it 2.1. All right, ooh, did you see that button that I used in the middle of the screen above the five? 
That button is like a joystick. If you do the left side of that button, it goes to the left. If you do the right side, it goes to the right. If you swipe up with that button, it goes to the up line. You swipe down, it goes to the previous line. It's very, very handy if I wanted to just come in here and delete just the one. I hit that, and now Hello World is two-tenths of the screen. So I zoom out, and notice, look at that. It is almost exactly the width of the screen. And that is important because when you are programming, you want your app to work both on the iPod, iPhone, iPad, and it's width specific to the device, as opposed to if I were to come in here and type in, you know, 13 for the font size, it would only be, it would be 13 in relative to the different devices, and it just wouldn't be the same. So coming in here and putting in something like width is very handy for you, okay? All right, there's that. And we can actually change the color of the text. Come down here, and we're going to write the word fill. Just tap on there, and it auto fills for you. But um, bum fill the fill. And we do the parentheses there. And then if you just start typing in a number there, or if you just tap on the parentheses, it'll bring up the color wheel. So let's do this. Let's go down. And what color is going to go well with yellow? Let's try like an orange, something like that. All right, there is a dark orange. And let's do something cool here. We're going to select that whole thing by triple tapping it. All I did was triple tap it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come down here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to triple tap fill here. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to paste it right there. The indention is going to be a little off. And just let's take a moment about talking about indention. Indention is very, very important. It's another way to organize your code. So you want everything to line up. Notice in line 9, there on the left side, you see where it says 9? Those are the different lines of code. Well, on line 9 there, you've got the function draw. And everything inside that function goes to the right over about five spaces. Very, very important to indent your code. So let's do this. Let's make this a little bit redder, like that. Tap out of it, and then where we're going to put this is we're going to offset it just a few pixels. We're going to subtract, let's just say, five pixels from both of them, and we're going to make a shadow and see what it does. Look, there is a shadow. It's almost like it's popping out. You're giving it texture. Notice that the red is on top versus the orange. That is a matter of order. Line 12 there, that one we drew first. This text right here we drew first, and then we drew this text next. And so therefore, that text is on top. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to put plus here. And notice all the math symbols are in that one. And we come over here. And I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put plus because I'd like it to look a little different. And let's change this. We're going to change that more to a shadowy color. We'll be done there. And now it'll look like a shadow. How cool is that, huh? All right, so there's tons and tons of things you can do here. Once I tap in the screen, tons of other bars come up top. You've got indention here, where if you tap and hold, it'll indent to the right or it'll indent to the left. You've got the search bar. You've got the parentheses there. If you tap and hold, it does the brackets and the braces for you. You've got, you have quotes there. You can do even a comment if you tap and hold. Tap and hold these things as well. Those are for variables and as well as for the equal sign. There's a lot of other symbols for you. One of the biggest things, if you're searching for code here, you can search your code right up top up there. So if I want to search for something, I can say, let's search for my setup. Well, it'll go right to it. And there it is. I can go, boom, there it is. And there's that. That's really helpful if you're using code and you're using a lot of it and you're trying to figure out what's going on. The other thing here too, this eyeball, this is a reference guide. And this is probably one of the most important things that you can use. If you are looking to draw something, you would go in here and let's just say go into the graphics. Tells you how to put in sprites, tells you how to put in backgrounds, tells you how Codia draws. There's a lot of good information in here. I would definitely search through it. If you're wanting to find a specific thing, you can swipe down and you can do a search. So if I wanted to search for text and how to draw text, search for that. And there's the text. I click in here and this tells me how to put in text. It tells me what each of the different parameters are for that text. Pretty awesome. Swipe back to the right, and you're good to go. All right. A couple of cool things just to end off the video here. As we are going through here, let's talk about some of the different things we can do. If we come in here, I'm going to comment out this one here. And if you remember, the comments are right there. Come here. And I'm using my joystick. There we go. Comment that one out. 
I'm going to comment this one out. All right, so those are now comments, and they're actually in there still, but the computer's not going to read them, which is very handy in case I want to test something. So if I come in here and I push play, there's my hello world. Now, what's really cool is instead of doing the width, half the width and half the height, what we're actually going to do is we're going to put in what's called the current position of the tap. So if I start typing in current, there's current touch, and if I do dot x and I do current touch dot y, what that's going to do is it's going to go where the current touches. So I'm going to actually touch my screen, and there's Hello World, and I'm moving my finger around on the screen. So now I've just created this movable type, this movable text along the screen, because it's going where my finger is on the screen. How awesome is that, huh? And the other thing which you can do, too, is up here, and we can come here, and we can type in print, and we're going to print the current touch position of the X, and then we're going to print the current touch position of the Y. So this will actually give me the coordinates on the left side of the screen. Look, there are the coordinates. How cool is that, huh? There are the different coordinates of Hello World of where I'm tapping on the screen. X and Y coordinates. Pretty awesome. We'll zoom it like that. And now obviously we don't see the coordinates, but that's a good way to use the output of the computer to tell, ooh, where do I want to touch it? Is it up there? Boom, boom. Is it in the middle? Yeah, pretty awesome, huh? All right. Well, this is pretty much it for the beginnings of Codea. I would definitely play around with it. Spend quite a lot of time in here. Spend a lot of time in the reference manual, too, because there is so much good information here. Talking about the touch, the Lua coding. If you're unfamiliar with Lua, to get in there and actually use Lua would be great as well. You can do vectors, motion, how to do some storage there on the device, as well as some animation, and even physics, which is pretty awesome as well. So that's pretty much Codea in a nutshell for you. Check it out, play around with it, and see what you can come up with. Have fun creating.